Start record. Thank you for the hospitality on Saturday. I'm sorry? Thank you for your hospitality on Saturday. What hospitality? When we came to that place, your sister's place. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I, I forget everything. I gotta take some things. That's, that's, that's convenient sometimes. terrible. Islam. Psalm, December fourth. Today's class is um, conscious. Today's class is conscious. Mental. Wrestling Federation. Hmm. Conscious mental conscious mental wrestling federation. Well, we're just gonna start up with a couple bills. Um, first thing, break free from the grip of a destructive cult. <laughs> Red Pill Diary. Billy Denham L. M S E D. Bonus book on the occult inside. Hidden knowledge. Exposing subversive mind control tactics used by Louis Farrakhan and other cult leaders. So that's um, Big Brother, Big Brother Denim L. So we want to plug his new book that just came out, Red Pill Diary. So make sure you support the brother. Just Google the name Billy Denim L, and you'll get the um, the um, the link to to get the book to purchase the book. All right. So there's that. Also wanted to give a shout out to some brothers in um in St. Louis, Missouri, Neighborhood Alliance. They have a, a movement right now called Put Down the Pistol. Mm -hmm. Alright. Because we already know St. Louis how it goes down there. And you know that's something that's going all around the world. This this um gun culture. So make sure y'all put down the pistols and make sure you check out the brothers in St. Louis, Missouri. If they're doing anything positive, it's important that we support and get behind them and try to implement what they're doing in, in our territories where we're at. All right? Once again, um, Summit of the Moors, operating as one economic unit. Jacksonville, Florida, 1625 North Pearl Street, 706-284-9808. And there's going to be a lot of master teachers at this presentation, at this summit. It'll be something to check out if you're in the territory or if you're, even if you're not in the territory. You know, it's, um, it's only Florida, so a few people could, could drive there. All right, so make sure you support the Summit of the Mars. And again, what is it? Um, where is it again? No, that's the website. Oh, yeah, um, January 12th and 13th, 2013. January 12th and 13th, 2013. Um, you can go to uh, Dialu. Dialoseku.com, D I A L L O S E K O U.com. Right? And again, that's um, Summit of the Moors. And I uh, just want to put, a, put, a, put some info out there. I was speaking with Brother, Brother Diallo a couple of days ago, and um, he, was, he was talking about Moors calling him about coming to vend at this and you know what I mean um you don't want it to get involved on, on that level right um what he what he is bringing to everybody's attention is that this is a summit it's not some Moorish event for you to come and vend your little whatever so you can get your little pocket money for the week <laughs> right this is a Moorish summit Right, so the topics of the Morris Summit, and and in I, I'm I'm pretty sure this is in order of importance. Um, topics: 25-year agenda for the Morris community. Food security, administrative process, understanding trust, collective economics, birth records, gold and silver purchasing, 
aquaponics, banking, land purchase, technology, and there are, there are also going to be private side sessions. So um, the people who are involved with the summit, the, 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 the day one ends at 8 p.m. And then from 8.45 p.m., there's going to be private sessions going on. All right, so that's the summit of the Moors operating as one economic unit, January 12th, 13th, 2013. DialloSeku.com, D-I-A-L-L-O, D-I-A-L-L-O-S-E-K-O-U.com. You can also go to AbundanceChild.com, and you can go to NBCTV1.com. Didn't work? Which one? NBCTV1. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing came up? I don't think so. I, I think that's the... um. I think that's the site for the because they're going to be streaming it. Oh, okay. So I think that's the site to, to sh that they're going to be streaming it from, probably. But yeah, just go to the Diallo, DialloSeku.com. Um, <coughs> what else we got here? Well, I just want to put this up. Um, this is from a website called Tribes of Tribes of Aboriginal Nations.com. Tribes of Aboriginal Nations.com. All I'm going to say is check that site out, right, if you are interested in finding out about the Hebrew Israelites. Because these Hebrew Israelites right here mm -hmm. are talking about, um, these Hebrew Israelites are talking about Aboriginal independent governments. They're talking about nationality. They're talking about ecclesiastical law, self-governing, theocratic governments. They're talking about self-rule, natural law and government, um, aboriginal peoples, covenant constitutions, and, uh, and numerous other topics. Right, But this is just to show that when... When we look at the Conscious Mental Wrestling Federation, right? The Conscious Mental Wrestling Federation are individuals who have in their mind that they're, they know who they are, right? But they're not activating who they are. You know, it sounds good, say who you are, but, you know, when they go to... to they get pulled over, they're given a license without their rights reserved on it. Or they're given a passport to go somewhere without their rights reserved on it, right? Now, the, one of the big things that's happening right now, why even the topic of Conscious Mental Wrestling Federation is this gimmick of debates going on right now mm -hmm. in the conscious community, yeah. right? Everybody wants to debate somebody about something that they said or whatever, whatever, right? Um, the debate that, that, that triggered it in my mind was, was the SETI and polite debate. I don't know if it's coming up or if it passed or whatever. But, you know, SETI already got his ass kicked by Aline, right? So for polite to debate him, you know, it must be some ego thing because SETI got his ass kicked by Aline intellectually. Right? This is the debate that's on YouTube? Yeah. The the Alim and Seti debate. Okay, yeah, that one's on YouTube. The, the 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 polite one, I don't know if it's up yet or what. Right? So knowing that that's just like um that's like somebody going and debating um Board Abba, right? Who wanted to debate debate us and defaulted. Right? That's like somebody going to debate him now. You know, after he's a defaulter. <laughs> right? Conscious Mental Wrestling Federation. Because a bully is going into the sandbox. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Some bullying is going on. All right? So be careful of the... the Because the, people try to pull you into to a wrestling match, to a debate, you know? Just just yesterday. Well, well you know, you're, you're saying, well, so you want to debate? That's that's like the thing right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everybody want to debate. But well, let's put it on the record. Kudrado L, debate anybody. Wherever you are, just fly me out there. <laughs> Let's do it. 
couple of tickets. If you want to debate, yeah, because I got to bring the muftis too. So if you're serious about debate and you think you got some some information that, you know what I mean, you can trump what the Moors are talking about, then the challenge is going out to all you Negro, Black, Colored, African, Conscious Mental Wrestling Federation chumps. <laughs> if you want to debate, fly Canaan Land Moors, Grand Shee, Kudrado L, and the Grand Mufti, Grand Vanguard, to wherever you're at, and we'll debate anybody. Because we don't have nothing to hide, and we're dealing with love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, and every slap you get upside your head is out of love, because we deal with tough love, and that's just how we do it. And if anything, we'll, we'll come here, we'll give you a hot plate of meal, and then we'll send you on your way. Well, yeah. <laughs> right. And then if, if, you wanted, if you want to debate us, but you want to come here, then fly, fly yourself out here, and let's do the debate. Because we got ample, ample places that we could do this thing at. For all you naysayers, talk biggers. Next, we're going to a letter. Going back to that whole Conscious Mental Wrestling Federation, Dirty Moors, etc. This is um, a, a letter that I got sent today by a sister, Maia Queen Nitha L. You know, um, I hope I pronounced her name right. If I didn't, apologies. Maia Queen Nitha L. And um, we were talking today about Moors and just how Moors are dealing with certain things. And she was bringing up her husband and him being a member of the temple and all that stuff. And um, when, you know, he was in the temple prior to meeting her, right? And, you know, he was, he was like a, you know, noble Jawali student, knew the Circle 7 front to back, memory type of studier, right? So he goes to the temple now and then comes found, you know, everybody's, you know, hating on him or whatever because he's coming in not blind. So they ousted him from, from the temple, basically, because of his knowledge. knowledge, because of he was higher than the Grand Sheik, let's say, right? <laughs> so she wrote a letter just, you know, breaking down, it was going down, so we're just going to... This is in, um, I think, Baltimore, I think, I think in Maryland. But everything should be in here. I, I didn't even, I didn't even um, pre-read this. I just printed it out. So this is this is going to be live. Um, in honor of my consort husband, Cleveland Smith Bay, who later changed his name to Ayindi Asim Bay, my consort, my consort joined the Mora Science Temple at age 21 when he was in the Crips. Once he understood nationality. He studied the teachings of the Moore Science Temple of America under Timothy Dingle Hill, who had the utmost love and respect for Ayinde. During Ayinde's time in the crypt, once he became a Moor, the Moors were not able to practice Moor science in the crypts, or with 21 when he was in the crypt. Not in the crypts, but in the crypt when he was in prison. Um, Brother Ayinde, Brother Lacey, Barbara Hill, and Brother Waddell Owens Bay were very instrumental in getting Mars to practice more science in the crypt. Notice, Federal, Circle, Federal Circuit Local Rule 47.8b states that the opinions and orders which are designated as not citable as precedent shall not be employed or cited as precedent. This does not preclude assertion of issues of claim preclusion, issue preclusion, judicial estoppel, law of the case, or the like, based on a decision of the court rendered in a non-precedential opinion or order. Brother Lacey Barber L., Brother Cleveland Smith Bay, Plaintiff's Appellants, and Brother Wardell Owens Bay, Plaintiff versus the United States Defendant Appellee, 996F2D318, Federal Circuit Court, 1993. Grand Sheik Timothy Dingle L. knew Ayinde had a legal mind. Grand Sheik Timothy Dingle L. made Ayinde a peace officer of Temple 13 in Baltimore. Timothy Dingle L. passed on. Ayinde continued to study as a young man even though he had his run-ins with the law studying more science was in his heart. Ayindi grew into a divine man, and he walked and talked more science. Ayindi had a legal mind. You could not tell by looking at Ayindi's. You could not tell by looking at Ayindi's holy Quran. He studied well. 
highlighting, adding notes in his Quran, etc. I only loved Nobu Jrali. He could demonstrate the law like no other. I knew about more science, but Aindi was the one who told and showed me who I was, or more. I introduced Aindi to the videos of Taj Street Bay, Valara Bay, etc. Aindi studied once he began to understand to understand the file paperwork which was posted in the newspaper about Morris Pay and Taxes. Temple 13 was moved to Lomax Bay's home in the basement. Aindi paid his dues faithfully. The Moors were jealous of Aindi, and they knew he was very well learned. The Grand Sheep became irate at Aindi for filing those writs, etc., about paying taxes. The Grand Sheep told Aindi that he has no right to file papers, and we are to pay taxes. This is this is a Grand Sheep talking, right? Because he sold them. <laughs> right. Aindi informed the Grand Sheep, "We are not to pay taxes to another government who occupy our land. Whenever Aindi did something, it was for the good of our people." Aindi wanted to bring Feed the Children organization here in Baltimore. The organization wanted 501c3. Aindi was able to demonstrate our authority and prove the Morris Science Temple organization was tax exempt. The lawyers for Feed the Hungry checked out our authority and found out the Morris Science Temple of America was not a 501c3 and was established before 501c3 was even created. This approved for Aindi to bring the truck to Baltimore to feed the children. Only thing Aindi had to sh had to show proof of what charitable work was the Morris Science Temple number thirteen had participated in the community, and it was on record. The Morris at Temple number thirteen had no record of community participation. Aindi and his close friend brother Merrick Bay, who was also a member of Temple Thirteen decided to start a garden across the street from the temple to show Moors participation in the community. Ayundi and Brother Bill did not get assistance from the Moors in the temple, nor did he get any assistance from the Grand Sheep. The neighbors were in opposition to the garden because they had no respect for the Grand Sheep and it showed. After Ayundi studied, after Ayundi studies and having phone conferences with other Moors throughout the nation, Aindi went to the temple and demonstrated in the temple about the Moors in Temple 13 not being in sync with what Nobu Jrali was teaching. Aindi also asked for financial reports. Aindi demonstrated so well you could hear the Moors in the audience who were saying Islamism. I look at the podium where the Grand Sheik and Assistant Grand Sheik, Chairman, etc. I could see the disdain they had for my husband, my consort, Aindi. Aindi spoke very highly of me while he was demonstrating. After Aindi finished demonstrating, each of the officers of the temple who sat on the podium demonstrated negatively against my husband and consort. I felt Aindi's pain. I was angry that they did this to my consort, my husband. They asked, they, they talked about him worshipping me, and it was awful. I vowed I would never attend another temple again. Aindi continued to work in the community to free our people. Aindi attended numerous demonstrations against the Baltimore gas and electric, police brutality, the school board, candlelight vigils, anything concerning our people he, attend, he attended. Any cause concerning our people, he never stopped teaching our people that they were Mars. Also, Aindi spearheaded the federal investigation against the murder of my cousin, who was a police officer, who was on duty at the time he was killed by his so-called fellow officers. Aindi will always be loved and remembered. The Moors in Temple 13 had the audacity to claim if, I, if Aindi was still in the temple, he would still be alive. Aindi died as a result of an illness, I believe was given to him either in the military or the hospital. Aindi ran marathons. He ran 13 miles a day. Aindi took good care of himself. This is why I knew they murdered him in the hospital or the military or even in the crypt. I only transcended June 21st, 2012. He was 58 years old. He was when he was 21. He died at 58. So he put in some work. Right? And. and now he did his thing. Yeah. That's why he passed. They served his purpose. Did his thing. You know what I mean? Even though they probably try to, you know, yeah. get him out the way because some of the stuff that, you know, he's talking about, you know, you're going up against, you know, the police and stuff yeah, like that, Baltimore yeah. police and all that, you know what I mean? They Baltimore, killed that killed a cop, <laughs> yeah, like that's, that's heavy, 
that's heavy, right? But um, the point being made that once, and again, we're going to use the um, the um, reference point of Taj Tariq Bey that nobody likes to hear if they're in the temple and they're trying to push religious church on people or Moorish church on people, mm. right? Incorporated. Yeah, incorporated. 501c3 Moorish Science Temples that get, that get, you know, they get checks, they get payouts, they get little perks. Same and, that a church would get. Right, yeah, same, same benefits or whatever that a church would get. You know, um, certain temples get those benefits or whatever. Really? Yeah. Right. Yeah, like where, like if you, yeah, even if you go, yeah, you go to some temples and they have like, you know, what I mean, buildings, you know, carpeted altar, altar, like they have the works. Some some temples, you know, what I mean, um, so being that that because when I was talking with the sister, she was saying that she was saying that when she now he he was a member of the temple, right? He went he brought her to the temple and when she came to the temple she told him yo this is church where like what is this he's like what do you mean this is church you know like this is the more science temple you know blah 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 and she put him onto the Taj videos and all that and then that just changed up his whole perspective like immediately yeah like Voltron <laughs> right like immediately right yeah just because um the the information that Grand Sheik Taj puts out is dealing with Moors taking a civic approach to their nationality and their birthrights. And then that's the only approach that you should take because Nobu Ali taught that that was the approach, not the religious side, right? Um, turn the other cheek side. Yeah, not to turn the other cheek, right? Um, so when, when you, when people, people are out there, you know, like for example, with Canaan land, you know, because there's no, there's no others, you know, like if we say Moors, it's us out here. There's, like, there's not any, there's no West Coast yeah, there's no, well, yeah, but there, there's only West Coast Moors because of us. Or there's only like, yeah, there's only Edmonton, like for example, um, more in Saskatchewan, right? Like linked us, mm -hmm. right? Um, Winnipeg, um, Edmonton. Edmonton, Montreal, um, Montreal, and there's, there's a more in BC right now, but he's still BC. he's still like kind of wavering in the last and yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> but but he's he knows about you know what I mean the Moors or whatever, he's right? Showing, I, was, I don't I don't I don't can't recall if you showed that picture. I was showing uh, Tess at his at his aunt's house. I was watching a, a Bob Marley uh, thing. And there's a man with a fez on mm -hmm. his head with his group. Oh, bunny way. Yeah, yeah, with, with, with yeah. red, red golden green bunny. bunny around the body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Damn it. Yeah, yo. Hey. Yeah, that's, that's, we talked about that in the... When they the, are. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Right? Um, the Empress pointed it out. This nigga gets a fez <laughs> 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 Turn it up. No! <laughs> <laughs> that is a fez right there. Right? Um, so, like... We have to, we have to, you know, we have to blow our horn as far as Canaan land is concerned because there's people outside of this jurisdiction that shouldn't be coming to us. You know, like this sister, right? Maya. So she, she shouldn't be coming to us. Yeah. All the way from Baltimore. But Baltimore. Isn't there stuff out there? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll check exactly. Time. Right? <laughs> like, they're going to go to some temple where they live, right? Like the brother in Arizona, you know, he, that was the, that was the 3,500, right? Yeah, right, that was the 3,500 brother, right? And then, um, there's all a brother in, um, there's a brother in Alaska that linked us. So the sacredness of what the men have in Canaan compared to what's going on down south, it's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, and, and, and a lot, and a lot of it is how we came in, because we came in under, we came in under, all the Moors that the dirty Moors taught the people don't listen to those guys. Oh, yeah, you because there's been there's been there's been like a there's been, there's like a secret there's a secret underlying hatred 
for active Moors by by the Moors who are trying to push the religious the perspective, pay taxes, pay taxes and, you know what I mean, uh, oh yeah, don't fight, you know, whatever, whatever, the turn the other cheek, you know, get a next slap, right? But <laughs> 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 right? don't worry about it, you know what I mean? Right? So, when, when, um, when, you know, that's that Tash says, you know, like, I'm, I'm, I haven't, you know, I'm not here to make friends with nobody or nothing. I'm here to just put the information for the people because that's what the job is, you know, uplifting fallen humanity. The job's not, you know, um, I want to debate this guy to show that I know more than this guy who is a more also, but he calls himself black and, you know, I have a fez on, so I'm going to get into this, you know what I mean? Um, when you have that reference point of active mores, for, for example, this is how you know active mores, right? So, this is our Moorish Guide newspaper, Moorish Guide newspaper, national edition, and this is for, this is a 2012 issue, right? This is the 2012 issue, okay? Now, this is a paper that is put out in in Jersey, right? With Grand Sheik Nature and Sheik S. Nika Hill. And their perspective of the paper is that this is for the Moors. So, you know, they say, you know, um, reading matter. All advertising, articles, correspondence, and news for the publication should be sent via mail or email to MST online at moorishguidepost.com and be accompanied with the name of the contributor, not necessarily for publication, but as evidence of good faith. So they're telling the Moors, send your articles, right? Send your articles to the paper so we can put it in the paper and we can get the paper going across the country. And when we went to Jersey, you know, like, nature has papers stacked up like this. Back papers. That Moors don't get, even though, you know, it says right here, um, terms of subscription, single copy, $1. Half a bundle, 50 papers, 30 bucks. And a bundle of papers, 100 papers, sixty dollars right but when you look at the conscious mental wrestling people you know they got top of the line camera it's like three four hundred right they got all the memory sticks that they need right they got all these places that they can go to go rent to get space or whatever to have their little debate you know they're gonna charge people twenty bucks a head to come to the debate and they're going to charge the online people 20 bucks a head, right? And, you know, we're still in this situation. When Noble Drali said that the press is our only possible safeguard, like the only thing that's going to assist us, the only weapon that we have is the press. Literature. Literature. That's all we have. The only thing that we need, not taken away from whatever else is out there, Right, that noble Jwali brought. But the prophet said, the greatest weapons in the hands of our group today is our press. Our press. That's the greatest weapon that we have. Why? Because with our press, we can change the people's perspective. Even though, you know, like, more is, you know, for just based on the mine the mine train that got run on our people right they're not even going to accept the Moorish guide for free out here like we can't give these away to people That's right the they're going to go they're going to go give NOI a dollar two dollars to get a black history pamphlet talking about, you know, they're the black this and the black that and the black the black this and that, right? But a free newspaper, they're going to go pick up CP, they're going to pick up 24, it's free. They're going to pick up Metro, it's free. 
They're going to pick up Now. That's free. They're going to pick up all these papers, Share, um, Caribbean Camera, you know, you name it. Any free paper, they're going to go pick it up. But you give them the Marsh Guide? Oh, no, sorry. Uh, no, no, I don't want that. I don't want it. No, it's, no, it's okay. It's okay. Because automatically they think of religion. Right? Automatic. Because everybody, the, most of the people have just been abused by religion. By re so any so type of religion, anything that... They could... Ah, no! no. <laughs> it's free, we care. Right? There's all kinds of religious newspapers that are free. I pick them up because I want to see what else <laughs> right. is doing. Right. You know what I mean? Right. But that's the difference. It's sad. You know what I mean? That's the difference. Mm -hmm. Right? So... In, in our, our in our greatest weapon, there's an article um, talking about Oscar the priest and him asking everybody everybody to study the Constitution. Right now, we talked about this before. We're just gonna put it on the record again. All these Negro black colored niggers out here, dirty Moors or whatever. They know Oscar the Priest, right? There's Oscar the Priest right there. Right? There's Oscar the Priest right there. They know him. Why do they know him? Because he's in every black book as the first black congressman. So they know, they're familiar with Oscar the Priest. The brother that looked like a European and he had the wavy hair and all that stuff. They're f very familiar with Oscar the Priest, right? If they study their black, whatever. Right? Well, here's a picture of Oscar the priest sitting with the prophet. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, whether the black people want to buy it or go with it or whatever is irrelevant because picture tells 10,000 words. Yo, isn't he sitting beside? <laughs> right? <laughs> so if, if, the, if the first black congressman has enough honor as a black congressman, right? One to take a picture with the prophet and have it published and go all across the country mm -hmm. and two, tell people to study the constitution yeah. then obviously he's not black anything he's just balancing between right. the de jure and the de facto right. right but even as even in his de facto position right he can't be this close to the prophet unless he's a member Right. Like he was yeah, he was. He was doing right. He was doing both, yeah, which is what, so, yeah, double agent, spooked by the door, <laughs> <laughs> straight spooked by the door, mm -hmm. right? So this is what this is what um, we're just gonna read a little bit of this, the constitutional thing, because again, it's going back to the conscious mental wrestling wrestlers, who always wanna, you know, interlock intellects. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and see who could do the you know you know at the start when they start the match and they do the and they grab the shoulders and, you know, and throw the man on the rope okay that's what they're about right <laughs> yeah that's what they're about so I am very anxious that those of my racial group should be better acquainted with the constitution and thereby more clearly understand their rights there are several states of the union that base their suffrage upon the ability to read and interpret the Constitution. Wishing to carry on a campaign of education in the Constitution, on the Constitution, I am writing to ask your cooperation in getting this matter before churches, schools, and societies of every description to which you are associated. If you can consistently do so, you will have the people read and discuss the Constitution and the amendments thereto section by section until they become thoroughly acquainted with it. A loyal American citizen, as loyal American citizens, we owe allegiance to the laws of our country and should know the contents of this document in order that we may protect our rights accordingly. When one understands the Constitution he or she will be in a position to ask his or her congressional candidate for support of every section and every amendment to the Constitution. 
those candidates who are not willing to do so should not be elected to office. Those who are willing to do so should be earnestly supported and elected. Mm. Right? This is the black congressman, first black congressman, Oscar de Priest, telling his people that because he's thought he's I'm very I'm very anxious that those of my racial group should be better acquainted with the Constitution. Right? So he's practically begging them go read the document. Stop playing around in the slave game and blah, 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 right? Just like Brother Lanre is saying, he was, uh, he was a level down from the prophet, right? But speaking that same principle, enforce the Constitution. I don't care if you're black, still enforce the Constitution. Because as American citizens, we owe allegiance to the laws of our country. But then when we go to the Constitution, and we go to 13th Amendment with the original 20 sections, section 12, the traffic in slaves with Africa is hereby forever prohibited on pain of death and the forfeiture of all the rights and property of persons engaged therein. And the descendants of Africans shall not be citizens. This is in the Constitution. The descendants of Africans shall not be citizens. Why? We go to our good friend, our good European brother, James Trafficant Jr. And, and I say, um, I say with the utmost respect, brother. Right? Brother. In 2002, Trafficant was indicted on federal corruption charges for taking campaign funds for personal use. Again, he opted to represent himself, insisting that the trial was part of a vendetta against him, dating to his 1983 trial. On April 15, he was convicted of 10 felony counts, including bribery, racketeering, and tax evasion. As per House rules, he lost his right to vote on legislation pending an investigation by the House Ethics Committee. On April 12, 2002, after a two-month federal trial, a jury found trafficant guilty of bribery and other charges. He was sentenced to federal prison, where he served seven years. Eventually, the House Ethics Committee recommended that trafficant be expelled from Congress. On July 24th, the House voted to expel him by a, 40, a 420 to 1 vote. You tell me there's no vendetta against this guy? The sole vote. The sole, oh, we're, we're going to what they're hiding. The sole vote against expulsion was Republican Gary Condit who at the time was in the midst of a scandal of his own mm. and had been defeated by his re-election primary. Trafficant was the first representative to be expelled since Michael Myers' expulsion in 1980 as a result of the Abscam scandal. A-B-S-C-A-M scandal. Abscam scandal. After his expulsion, Trafficant ran as an independent candidate for another term in the House while incarcerated at the Federal Correctional Institute in Allenwood. He received 28,000 votes for 15% of the vote and became one of, the, uh, one of only a handful of individuals in the history of the United States to run for a federal office from prison. <laughs> we'll read that again. This is Trafficant, right? The Big boy. Who's this? J James Trafficant Jr. After his expulsion, Trafficant ran as an independent candidate, candidate for another term in the House while incarcerated at the Federal Correction Institute. He received 28,045 votes for 15% of the vote and became one of only a handful of individuals in the history of the United States to run for a federal office from prison. 
The election was won by one of his former aides, Tim Ryan. All right. So. That was strategic. What? Why they have this vendetta against this man, who is a European, right? So he's down, like he's he's there. Yeah, right. He's down with them, you know, the colonizers, inquisitionists, or whatever. That's their people, but you know, they're they're basically ousting him from their corporation, right? So we go to we go to. Trafficant's speech from 1993 and this speech was on the floor of the Congress right so this wasn't you know like a lecture he did or you know um, him talking to somebody in a phone call or something like this is him in front of the same 240 or whatever Congress people right making this address that that we're going to read right now and then we'll see whether you know um he was some briber you know a racketeer or was he really enforcing something that they didn't want to want to get out there because remember the congress is it's sort of a public record but for but for that that body right um and him making these statements on the floor is like him making these statements on the floor is no different than um, El Hajj finding out about Elijah Muhammad and you know the connection to the Moors or whatever, and then saying, you know what, forget these guys, all these guys are a fraud. Don't even you know you know honors to them, you know, just like him. You know, he's on the floor, so obviously he he recognizes that position. That he had as something, but he wasn't down with what was going on, obviously by what he was saying, right? Um, and there's going to be um, some. I'm going to do some um, some amendments in this, so it could be real secure, sure about what he's saying. Yeah, right. Like absorbed what he's saying, right? Um, okay, so United States. Okay, so check this now. So this is the top of the document, right? United States of North America. <laughs> right, this is the start. United States of North America. Speaker, James Trafficant Jr. addressing the House of Representatives. Mr. Speaker, we are here now in Chapter 11. What Chapter 11? All right. <laughs> Members... <laughs> Members of Congress are official trustees presiding over the greatest reorganization of any bankrupt entity in world history, the U.S. slash Canada government, slash Canada I put in there, right? But it's the same thing, right? He makes reference to U.S. through here, but we're going to say slash Canada because we already know, right? We are setting forth, hopefully, a blueprint for our future. There are some who say this is a coroner's report and will lead to our demise. Right? It is an established fact that the United States slash Canada federal government has been dissolved by the Emergency Banking Act, March 9th, 1933, declared by President Roosevelt being bankrupt and insolvent. HJR 192, 73rd Congress, session, June 5th, 1933, joint resolution to suspend the gold standard and abrogate the gold clause, dissolving the sovereign authority of the United States and the official capacities of all United States governmental offices, officers, and departments, and it's further evidence that the United States slash Canada federal government exists today in name only. And to put that in context, if anybody goes and checks the Governor General website, the Governor General for Canada website says on it, and it said that for the past, ever since 
we came into the information 2007 this is what it said on the website and it still says that right now today that the governor general of Canada is is Canada's de facto head of state on the website they're saying this right that the, that the office of the governor general exists in name only it's not an actual seat of the government it's just a name that they're using and if you buy it you know then you're, you're, it gives it the power. then you give it the power right the receivers of the United States bankruptcy are the international bankers via the United Nations the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund all United States offices officials and departments are now operating within a de facto status in name only under emergency war powers and if you go back to Canaan Land Moors um, Canaan Land Moors IRS versus black entertainers we talk about the emergency war powers and them implementing these war powers because of war in order to tax people but then when the war was over everybody just kept getting taxed though because yeah. just like the governor general even though he's de facto well, it says de facto on the website but you know that's still you know we're gonna go to him or her or whoever it is when that's a de facto position right within the constitutional republican form of government now dissolved the receivers of the bankruptcy have adopted a new form of government for the United States right now let's parallel that with Nobu Ali right because we're putting all this together so people can't say more is a crazy people we don't know what we're talking about because everything follows the pattern of what the Prophet left right so what Nobu Ali say we organized as the Moorish Temple of Science in the year 1925 and were legally incorporated as a civic organization under the states of Illinois, November 29, 1926. The name Moorish Temple of Science was changed to the Moorish Science Temple of America, 1928, in accordance with the legal requirements of the Secretary of the State of Illinois. And we know that the Moorish Temple of Science adopted as its corporate name the Moore Science Temple of America. All right. The constitutional republican form of government now dissolved, Moore Holy Temple of Science. The receivers of the bankruptcy have adopted a new form of government in the United States. This new form of government is known as democracy. All right? What is it that we see in the temples? Democracy they've gotten rid of the Republican mind frame which which falls under the Constitution you know because we're part and parcel so we're supposed to have Republic de jure mind frame if we're in the temple if we don't have that mind frame then we're 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 democracy 501c3 temples right temples that are um, not Temples that did not keep that, that civic perspective. Because unlike unlike the federal government, the federal the federal constitutional republican form of government, unlike that, the Moorish Holy Temple was not dissolved. In this essence, it, the 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 jour was dissolved. And the receivers of the bankruptcy adopted a new form of government called democracy. Right? This act was instituted and established by transferring and or placing the office of the Secretary of the Treasury to that of the Governor of the International Monetary Fund. So in order for them to implement this democracy 
they had to institute and establish this democracy by transferring the office of the Secretary of the Treasury to the head of the monetary fund. So now, all the gold and silver and commerce that belong to the citizens and the citizens alone that the Treasury is responsible for, now the IMF is, is responsible for that. This is why the IMF could go to Jamaica and pay them out, right? But not allow them to go and plant their own crops and sell their own crops overboard. They have people in Jamaica eating Mexican, <laughs> Mexican freaking fruits and vegetables, right? And then they have all the, all the, um, Jamaican fruits and vegetables going out. That's crazy, right? What up, Miley? Right? Crazy, right? Um. Public Law 94 to 564, page 8, section HR 13955, reads in part, The U.S. Secretary of the Treasury receives no compensation for representing the United States. Right? The U.S. Secretary of the Treasury receives no compensation for representing the United States. Now, if we put it in perspective of um, job, right? You have a job, and you have a title on your job, right? But if you're tight, if you're not getting paid, if you're not receiving compensation on your job based on this title that you have right that means there's no title if you're not being compensated based on the title that you have right so if I'm if I'm mechanic right and my job is fix cars right but you know I'm, I'm doing this job but, you know, I'm just doing it for free. Hands dirty, you know, oil under fingernails and all that, right? Dirty every day, you know, going home every day, nine to five, working in this, working in this, um, this, um, shop, body shop, right? But I'm not getting paid. I'm not, that's, I'm not a mechanic. I could do the job. I might be very good at the job that I do, but if you're not getting compensated for that position, that position doesn't exist. Or you're a volunteer. Or, or you're volunteering. <laughs> you know? And you're only going to volunteer so long before you say, you know what, forget these guys, because, you know, going home 9 to 5 every day, every day 9 to 5. Imagine you go to somewhere every day 9 to 5 and you don't get paid. You'll probably give, give up on that. But, again, you see that the U.S. Secretary of the Treasury receives no compensation for representing the United States because the United States Secretary of the Treasury is really the head of the IMF. So he doesn't need to get compensation from the United States because the IMF is paying him. Mm -hmm. paying him good and paying him good too because the IMF has all the gold and silver commerce and all that stuff that they jacked from everybody around the world. The new, the new IRS is the IMF. Right? And, and they go hard. They go very hard. Right? Gold and silver were such a powerful money during the founding of the United States of America. So, up here, he's talking about the reorganization of a bankrupt entity in the world, the U.S. government. Which is an entity. And then down here, he's talking about Gold and silver were such powerful money during the founding of the United States of America, not the founding of the U.S. government. So Traficant knows about the, the jure side of the government that he really wants to connect himself to, but he can't because 
inquisitionists are in control, and him recognizing that, said, okay, you know what, I'm going to just put everything on the record now, right now, in front of all you guys, just so you know that you're not going to play, pull the sheep over everybody, pull the, you know what I mean, you're not going to blind everybody, right? Since gold and silver coinage were heavy and inconvenient for a lot of transactions, they were stored in banks and a, chain, and a claim check was issued as a money substitute. People trading their coupons as money or currency. Currency is not money, but a money substitute. So he's putting everything out there, huh? The vendetta against this guy? Currency is not money, but a money substitute. Redeemable currency must promise to pay a dollar equivalent in gold or silver money. Federal Reserve notes or Canada Mint notes make no such promises and are not quote unquote money. A Federal Reserve note or a Canada Mint note is a debt obligation of the Federal United States slash Canada government, not money. The federal United States slash Canada government and the U.S. Congress or the Canada Parliament were not and have never been authorized by the Constitution for the United States of America to issue currency of any kind but only lawful money, gold and silver coin. It is essential that we comprehend the distinction between real money and paper money substitute. This is on the floor of the Congress, right? It is essential. It is essential. Distributed or this conversation was held? Yeah, this, this conversation was held, right? It is essential that we comprehend the distinction between real money and paper money substitute. This is for all the... All the um, Savings people, mm. right? All the, your favorite rapper, I have, you know, a million dollars in the bank and your favorite entertainer, I'm a millionaire, I have a big house and whatever, whatever, right? One cannot get rich by accumulating money substitutes. One can only get deeper in debt. We the people no longer have any money. Most Americans have not been paid any money for a very long time. Perhaps not in their entire life. So if we go back to if if we go back to them getting the gold and silver out of circulation, right? Through House Joint Resolution and Roosevelt, you know, abrogating the gold standard and all that stuff. Ever since 33, people haven't been paid. Everybody's working for free. Which goes back to... U.S. Secretary of the Treasury receives no compensation for representing the United States. Just like all these people with jobs receive no compensation for representing those organizations that they work for. Because... One cannot get rich by accumulating money substitutes. One can only get deeper in debt. And all they do is pay fiat notes. Right? Now, do you comprehend why you feel broke? Now, do you understand why you are bankrupt along with the rest of the country? Federal Reserve notes are unsigned checks written on a closed account. Federal Reserve notes are an inflatable paper system designed to create debt through inflation, devaluation of currency. Whenever there is an increase of the supply of a money substitute in the economy without a corresponding increase in gold and silver backing, inflation occurs. Inflation is an invisible form of taxation that irresponsible governments inflict on their citizens. The Federal Reserve Bank, who controls the supply and movement of Federal Reserve notes, has everybody fooled. 
they have access to an unlimited supply of Federal Reserve notes, paying only for the printing cost of what they need. Right? You have some of my jack. Oh, you got it. Right? The Federal Reserve Bank, who controls the supply and movement of the Federal Reserve notes, has everybody fooled. They have access to an unlimited supply of Federal Reserve notes, paying only for the printing costs of what they need. Hmm. Right? Paying only for paying only for the printing costs. Right? And remember, he's talking about this fraud called the Federal Reserve Bank. That, and I'm beating this into the head so we can get this, right? They have access to an unlimited supply of Federal Reserve notes, paying only for the printing costs of what they need. That is no different than 3500 for nationality papers mm. when it costs 10 cents a sheet. And nationality paperwork tops, oh, oh, how, what's how much? Our pages were 11 pages or something like that? Yeah, like 12 pages. All right, so like we have 12 pages, right? So $1. twenty is really what the, the amount should be. As far as you come to the temple, you want paperwork? Okay, no problem. You know, 12 pages, all right, $1. twenty, ten $0.10 cents a page. If you're a member, $0.05 cents a page, right? Firms or Federal Reserve notes are nothing more than promissory notes for U.S. Treasury securities. A promise to pay the debt to the Federal Reserve Bank. There is a fundamental difference between paying and discharging a debt. Oh yeah, Can you just whisper. And um, there is a fundamental difference between paying and discharging a debt. To pay a debt, you must pay with value or substance, i.e. gold, silver, barter, or a commodity. With Federal Reserve notes, you can only discharge a debt. You cannot pay a debt with a debt currency system. You cannot service a debt with a currency that has no backing in value or substance. No contract in common law is valid unless it involves an exchange of good and valuable consideration. Unpayable debt transfers, the unpayable debt transfers power and control to the sovereign power structure that has no interest in money, law, equity, or justice because they have so much wealth already. Hmm. Unpayable debt transfers power and control to the sovereign power structure that has no interest in money law, equity, or justice because they have so much wealth already. They have all this, they have so much wealth already because they abrogated the gold standard. They have so much wealth already because the British Empire is really the Moorish Empire that they inherited. That's why they call themselves the black nobility in Europe in order for them to usurp the sovereign power of the Moorish Empire and using that um, that splinter of Moorish sovereignty to exercise their de facto position on Africans who shall not be citizens. <laughs> right? Their lust is for power and control. Since the inception of central banking, they have controlled the fates of nations. The Federal Reserve System is based on canon law and the principles of sovereignty protected in the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. In fact, the international bankers used a canon law trust as their model, adding stock and naming it a joint stock trust. The U.S. Congress had passed a law making it illegal for any legal person 
to duplicate a joint stock trust in 1873. The Federal Reserve Act was legislated post facto to 1870, although post facto laws are strictly forbidden by the Constitution. The Federal System, the Federal Reserve System, is a sovereign power structure separate and distinct from the Federal United States government. The Federal Reserve is a maritime lender and or maritime insurance underwriter to the Federal United States operating exclusively under Admiralty Maritime Law. The lender or underwriter bears the risk and the maritime law compelling specific performance in paying the interest or premiums are the same. Assets of the debtor can also be hypothecated, which means to pledge something as a security without taking possession of it, by the lender or underwriter. The Federal Reserve Act stipulated that the interest in the debt was to be paid in gold. There is no stipulation in the Federal Reserve Act for ever paying the principal prior to 1913. And talking about the parallel with the profit, right? Most Americans owned clear allodial title to property, free and clear of any liens or mortgages under the Federal Reserve Act, 1913. So the Federal Reserve Act, 1913, right, was set up. I don't care what the mental wrestlers have to say. The Federal Reserve Act, or the Federal Reserve itself, was set up in 1913 to counteract Nobu Same year that he started doing his stuff, the same year they did what, what they have to do. Right? And they're doing what they have to do. Right? Peace, fam. Right? Um, <clears throat> so, until the Federal Reserve Act 1913 hypothecated all property within the Federal United States to the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve, in which the trustees, stockholders, held legal title, the U.S. citizen, tenant, franchisee, was registered as a beneficiary of the trust via his or her birth certificate. In 1933, the Federal United States hypothecated all of the present and future properties, assets, and labor of their subjects. The 14th Amendment U.S. Citizen to the Federal Reserve System. So in 1933, after they stole all the gold and all that, and they received assistance from the international community in order to get out of the hole, the collateral or the stock that they used in order to get the funds were the people. Through their birth certificate, which is why Moors tell people don't mess around with the birth certificate, don't go try and claim, make claims on the birth certificate that that's not yours because you have no idea where this thing's been in the world. You're gonna be making a claim, you're gonna go file a UCC to go claim some bond on a birth certificate that's been around the world since you were born. Who knows how much different hands that thing's gone into? Who knows how many people bought that and sold that back to somebody else? Right? Because it's fiat. So you can you can deal with it any way you have to deal with it. Trade it, sell it, whatever. You can do whatever you gotta do with it. Right? In return the Federal Reserve System agreed to extend the Federal United States Corporation is on the floor of the Congress. In return, the Federal Reserve System agreed to extend to the Federal United States Corporation all the credit money substitute it needed. Right? Like any other debtor, the federal United States government had to assign collateral and security to their creditors as a condition of the loan. Since the federal United States didn't have any assets, they assigned the private property 
of their economic slaves. So they, they have they have people think the private property of their economic slaves are the things that the slaves have when it's actually them. The actual individual is what is going to be used as collateral. Like any other creditor, the federal United States government had to assign collateral and security to their creditors as a condition of the loan. Since the federal United States didn't have any assets, they assigned the private property of their economic slaves, the U.S. citizens, as collateral against the unpayable federal debt. <clears throat> unpayable federal debt. They're signing the collateral against the unpayable debt. Well, that's lose, 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 lose. <laughs> that, right? <laughs> unpayable debt. The debt increases. increases. No matter what they do. They raise tax on this, do that, do this, the debt still increases. They reach their, what they call it, the ceiling. Yeah. It had to get more to go past the ceiling. So that's what just recently happened, right? Yeah. And they're still in fear of reaching this new ceiling. Right. Right. And then, and, and, or not and, fear, but they will. Yeah. You know. And the ceiling is really the floor. <laughs> sub sub basement, <laughs> right? And they have like a sub sub basement under a sub sub basement, and <laughs> money's just piling downwards. <laughs> That's just piling down, right? You go outside and you see, you know, the, the, the roots going this way and the leaves going this way, you know that. <laughs> you know you're in the matrix, right? They also pledged the unincorporated federal territories, national parks, forests, birth certificates, nonprofit organizations as collateral against the federal debt. So not only did they use the people as collateral, but they also used the unincorporated federal territories. So territories they make up national parks, forests, birth certificates, and non-profit organizations as collateral against the federal debt. All has already been transferred as payment to the international bankers. This is 1993. 93 or 33? 93. Yeah. Like this speech is from 93. Yeah. Right? So, since 93, mm -hmm. our brother, Trafficant Jr., who they say is a bribery and you know what I mean he did all this stuff seven years seven years in prison <laughs> right seven years in prison you know right <laughs> right all has already been transferred so we don't even know when it was transferred but in ninety three he said that everything's already the people already have it the people are yeah, the international bankers have all the, have, have, all the have all the economic slaves, the territories, national parks, forests, birth certificates, yeah. nonprofit organizations as collateral against the federal debt. It's pre authorized. Yeah, pre authorized <laughs> payment. <laughs> pre authorized <laughs> payment. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to worry. We'll just take it off your credit card every month yeah. and don't worry about it. You don't even have to think about it. Right? Or we'll just go into your account and we'll just take out the 20 every month. Right? Unwittingly, America has returned to its pre American revolution feudal roots, whereby all land is held by a sovereign and the common people had no rights to hold a loyal title to property. Once again, we the people are the tenants and sharecroppers renting our own property from a sovereign in the guise of the Federal Reserve Bank. We the people have exchanged one master for another. This has been going on for over 80 years without the informed knowledge of the American people, without a voice protesting loud enough. Now it's easy to grasp why America is fundamentally bankrupt. Let me read that part again, because this is for 
do this for all the conscious mental wrestlers, right? It's been going on for over 80 years without the informed knowledge of the American people. How are the American people, and we I mean, know, you know, if he's talking about a loyal title and Federal Reserve Act and beneficiaries and subjects and he knows who the American people are. Uh, he's not confused about who are the real Americans. Right? And without the informed knowledge, without the informed knowledge of the American people, without a voice protesting loud enough, right? This thing has been going on for 80 years. It's no different than what we see has been going on for the past 80, 90 years with the movement. That people came in, said that they're the head of the whatever, everybody will run to them, give them all their fiat, realize those guys are fraud. They go over this guy. This guy said, you know, well, you know, I came from this other planet, you know, and, you know, I have 500,000 books, so I'm obviously qualified. And then everybody go jumps on him, and then you know they do they do to him like trafficant. Oh well, you know I think that guy's doing bribery and he molested children and stuff like that. So you know get that guy out of the way. Bam, he's out of the way, and now people are you know left sitting there again waiting. Then they're gonna go over this guy, you know this guy called you know Aboriginal law firm, right? Because these guys are the ones that actually have. You know, they have a university online you can go to and you're going to learn so much information, blah, blah, blah. And then when you call them, you know we had no answer. <laughs> but you pay 1200 <laughs> for some papers, right? And you're still not getting no answer. And you're calling from, you know, the, the one call phone because you got kidnapped because you were trying to use some paper that they gave you as your freedom papers when it doesn't really work like that. Right? That's, called what again? That's just what's been, based on what traffic and saying, is, is going on between the Federal Reserve mm -hmm. and the, um, the Congress and the international bankers and all these people who are outside of the Constitution mm -hmm. and trying to make it seem like they're constitutional because they have this seat called, you know, whatever the seat's called, right? It doesn't really, that's not really what's going on. Just like the temple, right? Uh, he, yeah, he's just, you know, read the letter earlier with um, Brother Indy, right? That he was a member of the temple and he was, you know, doing a garden and doing all these things, right? But when you really, when you really check it out, right? When you really check out what's going on, those people aren't, Grand Sheik or whatever they claim they are, right? Just like if if just like United States is name only. Yeah. That's not our actual, you know, um, entity. government entity, uh, right? Private corporation has nothing to do with anybody, other than those people who set it up. Just like birth certificate it has nothing to do with anybody other than those people who created that instrument, right? Um, why don't more people own their properties outright? Why are 90% of Americans mortgaged to the hilt and have little or no assets after all debts and liabilities have been paid? Why does it feel like you are working harder and harder and getting less and less? We are reaping what has been sown and the results of our harvest is a painful bankruptcy and a foreclosure on American property, precious liberties, and a way of life. Few of our elected representatives in Washington have dared to tell the truth. Right? Few of our elected representatives have dared to tell the truth. That's the same thing like Noah Drawley saying, few faithful Moors. Few. Right? And we know how much, how many few is. 
Few of our elected representatives in Washington, D.C. Washington, have declared to tell the truth. The federal United States is bankrupt. Our children will inherit this unpayable debt and the tyranny to enforce payment. So I tell people, claim your nationality. Because when you proclaim your nationality, a uh, claim is being made on you. Right? A uh, uh, national claim is being made on you. Right? By a divine and national movement. Which trumps this entity that only exists in name only. And it's trying to say that, yeah, well, we have, you know, we gave you that birth certificate, so, you know, that means that you, you know, a citizen or whatever, you know, but doesn't, that's not what's going on, right? <coughs> America has become completely bankrupt in world leadership, right? So it's bankrupt in world leadership, which means that it can't go around the world and act like, you know, I'm the head of something, right? Financial credit. It's because it's cause nobody really want to do it now because everybody knows that they're bankrupt and yeah. they need to be bought up, right. right? And it's reputation for courage, vision, and human rights. So all those things that people used to look to the Republic for mm -hmm. as, you know, a beacon light, as a message for the rest of the world to follow, mm -hmm. all that is null and void now. Because one... Because the people who are claiming to be United States of America are really United States democracy and they have nothing to do with the Republic. And then two, the people who are we the people that should be standing up for the Republic, mm -hmm. they want to be Negro, Black, Colored and be down with the democracy. Hmm. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? So they're down with the fraud that yeah. is trying to take them out. Right? Um, this, is on the, this is an undeclared economic war bankruptcy and economic slavery of the most corrupt order wake up America take <laughs> back your country wake up America America take back your country not take back your corporation because he said in there u.s. is corporation right so that's James Traficant and that's why he spent the seven years in prison yeah James well they're saying that it's for you know other stuff but Oh, find after you read this, yeah. yeah. After you read this, you can you can clearly see why they would go at him so hard. Um, T R A F I C A N T, James Trafficant Jr. That's pretty heavy. I'm surprised they let him go on. Or that somebody you know jump down and just. Yeah, I mean they probably were. They probably were, but, but you know it's just the fruit because for the ain't listening. Yeah, so like, like, we're like, here. Yeah. We've been here. <laughs> Why this room ain't packed? Nobody ain't listening. And those who listen... Next Tuesday, I bring your copy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's few. And I'm worried, so as long as it stays few. Straight. Go. You got there. Look about you. Okay, okay. Well, you had something from that? Uh, what about uh -huh. this uh, in the news? recent happenings, uh, the Palestine being granted statement. some state, statement. some state observer status. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, but, it's equal to what um, the Vatican is. But <laughs> if one, I was reading in the, the Metro, or once, no, not the 24 or Metro, one of them, on, I guess, Monday. And or was it Friday? And it said so. It had it. It mentioned like that the UN and it mentioned de facto. Oh. Like de facto was in there yeah. and saying like the UN de facto and something something. Yeah. I don't remember the full wording. Yes. But and talking about the Palestinians being upgraded to this yeah. observer state thing. Yes. And then like. Sure, I don't remember the whole yeah, yeah, yeah. way it was worded and stuff. Like, to me, it was like, there they are right there showing you that it doesn't matter what the UN want to call you because they're de facto as well. Right, right, right. Exactly. So exactly. Th these people are right. fighting for this status, which is de facto. Yeah, right. When, when 
you know, you have as de facto as they are, right? They put out certain things to let people know that we're de facto, so it's on you. Yeah, <laughs> right? exactly. Right? What like, was in the paper yeah, right there. Like, yeah, yeah, like the declarations, right? Um, what is this thing? Well, it's just the point is that they will always tell you what's going on. But like you were saying, if people aren't reading, or if they're reading and they're not really, it's not. We're so used to it almost mm -hmm. that it's it's. You know, you become desensitized, to right. whatever the word is. Yeah. So you read it and it just want to look into the meanings of certain Exactly. Things. You just take it as news and, and you don't really break it down, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, let's we'll just read this right here. Um, Moors, our rightful place in the social political arena by Taj Tariq Bay. More M O O R slash M U U R is the rightful and correct correct name of the natural peoples of North America, Central America, South America, and Americana. More is the ancient before the great Christian book burnings, before forced and reconstructed history, and prior to the revolution and the union of 1863 A.D. More is derived from Moroccan, which is is descended from Moabite. The word, name, or title Al means coming down from or descended down from. Thusly, Al Moroccan means Moors or Moroccans who are descendants of the ancient Moabites. The Aboriginal and natural peoples of the land are Al Moroccan or as referred by the dialectic the dialectically altered name American. This primogeniture, history, and facts supersede the modern nomenclatures such as Indian, Africans, Negroes, Blacks, and colors, etc. For those who may be confused about the different the different spellings of more and or more M U U R versus M O R, let us correct and address these misconceptions. M-U-U-R and M-O-O-R are one and the same. The vowels O and U are interchangeable. The vowel U is also rightfully and correctly used by many Moabites due to the fact that the letter O was considered sacred by the ancient ones and was most often not put in written form. Thus the letter U is sometimes used instead of the letter O. One may also find ancient scripts Mapamundi or texts having some words absent of vowels, A, E, I, O, U, and sometimes Y. Such ancient writings may contain only consonants. The, this same grammatical principle applies to the spellings Muslim and Muslim. Right? The fountain of youth, as sought by many who came to the North Gate, is the early part of contemporary North American history is in reference to the Moorish high culture science involved in working knowledge of the 12 signs of the zodiac, geometry, and navigation. Many historians have defined Moor as meaning navigator. While not totally correct by definition, Moors were the great navigators of the earth and the seven seas. This is why many historians equate the proper noun and natal name more with the verb navigate. Recognition and social, or recognition, social and political. Due to the fact that the Crusaders and Inquisitionists had conquered and colonized the lands of the Moors, Moors the Moors have suffered a fall from grace and have lost their rightful sovereign birthright position and jurisdictional powers. North America has since upon si North America has been under occupational colonial powers of Europeans. Upon efforts to establish peace and tranquility for our posterity on the land, the Moors 
taught a select few European neophytes governmental principles embodied within the sublime ancient philosophies by way of Masonic instruction. Out of this compromise for peace and friendship and for the balancing of karmic debt, the United States Republic and its Republican form of government was born. Thusly, Moors are part and parcel of this government. The word part means a party to the construction of the United States government. Parcel means the land. The conjunctive political relationship established between the Moors and the Europeans in North America territories can be easily recognized by those who have been exposed to some true world history absent of colonial blackouts and alterations. And this is why we go back to um, the reference point and you know why we're biased. And when people say, oh, where should I go? Yeah, RV Bay Publications. Just go there. You find everything that you want. Yeah, you know, I was reading this thing about... You get that from RV Bay Publications? No, I was on this guy's website. Don't even bring that up. Don't even bring up that guy's site. Because you, all you're going to do is get distracted. Guaranteed. All you're going to do is get distracted if you don't stick to the principles that were handed down, right? Like, for example, like, um, say like Grand Chic Nature, for example, right? Grand Chic Nature is a student, not Taj, you know? So, you know, we're, we'll back him. We'll support them, you know, 500%. No questions asked. Just say it and we're there. You know what I mean? Um, Aleem and Kadira, students of Taj, students of the Empress. So now we are, now there's, there's two reference points now that we have, right? That we that can be used and can be implemented. You know? So we back them, rep them. You know? Um, Jalani Bay. Right? One of the most one of the most active moors out there that nobody pays attention to because, you know, him him himself and the moors that they deal with, they don't mess around with you know, social, whatever, they, they're they active. They have no time for Facebook and stuff like that. They'll be on there, but, you know, it's not like they're on there, you know? Things just open, but, you know, they're active. You can hear the thing go off when you get a message or whatever. So you don't need to sit in front of it waiting to talk and then have a conversation or whatever, you know what I mean? It'll go off when you when you get hit up, all right? Um... Who else, yo? Of course, um, um, Pleasant Bay. Pleasant Bay. Right? Swift Pleasant Angel. Bay. Swift Angel number one. Right? Ada. You know? Like Ada. Moorish Ada. It would, would give you lessons. Not just talk about a noble jewelry. Right? Um, we talked about earlier. Right? Professor Denham L. Right? Another more active. Been doing, been doing work. Yes, sir. Been, been doing work. work. Who's that? Jose Pimenta Bay. Jose. Jose Pimenta Bay. Right? Active. You know, university professor with a book and all that stuff. You know? Right? So we, we have to... We have to... Really, you know, like when we when we say that we're getting involved in this in the Moorish movement, and you see certain things going on out there that might seem contradictory to what should be happening, know that yeah, that's what it is. You know what I mean? And you're not wrong for thinking that because you know well well. He has a fez on, so maybe he was just, you know, I don't know. We give him the benefit of the doubt. No, well, no, we don't give benefits of doubts or nothing like that because half these people are infiltrators and they have a job to do. Yeah, right? And their job is to get people's perspective scattered. 
And once they get your perspective scattered, there's unless you go directly back to the source, you're done for. And they're going to have you, you know what I mean, like way over there in some oblivion over there that you don't even know what you're involved in. You don't even know how you got there. All you know is that you're, you're, you're trapped right now. Because when, once you get in, they don't let you leave. You know, once you get in under the fraud of, you know, um, dirty mores, um, mental wrestling mores, right? Conscious mental wrestling people, right? That this is their thing. You know what I mean? Like battle wits. See who's uh right? And whenever they're wrong, then they attack you and tell you that, oh, yeah, you know, you're this, you're that, you know, you don't know what you're talking about, you know, blah, blah. When really and truly, they have a position that they've taken already. It's not like, you know, it's like when we say, when we talk about, um, like, like Aboriginal law firm, Marrakesh Society and people like that, right? I'm talking from first-hand experience. They try to sell me a package. You know what I mean? Yeah. They tried. They tried to say that you know when when we were going through the stuff with the sister in the news, right? Mm -hmm. They tried to say to me, go to her, get her social and her birth certificate or whatever, send it to them, really? right? So they can you know dissolve right. her contracts, and now she's going to be free now. You know, you guys don't know what you're doing over there mm -hmm. you know commerce runs everything and you know and this runs everything and that and they you guys aren't mentioning profit or nothing like that you know like this is back then you know thinking that you know um canaan land you know we're absent-minded we're new to this so because we're new to this you know you could try to run game on us well that's why we said from the beginning we're biased because the Moors that the Moors that brought us in in Mecca, they laid all this down. They're not just talking because something to say. Like this was laid down to us. You know, watch out for dirty Moors. Watch out for Moors that talk shit against Taj. Watch out for Moors who say that you know we don't know what we're talking about. Watch out for Moors who try to to sell you stuff. You know what I mean? And and like I, like I said, we had the reference point. So if I have, if, if, if I'm going to go to Grand Sheik, Dawid Ali El, and he's going to say, you know what, Kudro, um, I think you guys need all these books for when you go back to Canaan land, right? I'm like, damn, yeah, Circle 7, you know, Moorish literature, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, I go ask some other Moors, yeah, you know, I'm trying to get some, you know, just play and possum or whatever, you know, try to get some information. Yeah, you know, we got, we got Circle 7, you know, it's... Eight bucks, seven bucks, fifteen bucks, twenty bucks, or whatever. What do you mean? No, oh yeah, well, we just wrote this book, you know, about the Moors, and you know, it's um, it's a real good, you know, scholarly work or whatever, you know, to help support the temple, and you know what I mean, and that's a Taj book that you have that I have in my library. Are you trying to sell to me a Taj book that I have? And then you're telling I got it for free. You're telling me fifty bucks, or twenty bucks, or thirty bucks. You got some DVDs, you know, and, and DVDs are the best, right? Because you're gonna go on some of these sites, and you're gonna see them pushing, you know, twenty-five, thirty-five bucks for a DVD, one, and that's not even their stuff. That's somebody else's stuff, and they're not even getting a cut off of that. That's terrible. And but they have a website. Where people could go and buy stuff online, pay thirty-five bucks for one DVD, right? And people willingly pay, yeah. or they wouldn't have that website, right? You know what I'm saying? It's not like with it's not like with you know Canaan Land. You know we have a store, and nobody comes. It just stays open. You know, no, you got to shut shut down. You got to pay rent and all that stuff. You know what I mean? Even if you have, a, even if you have a website, you have to pay the little, the monthly, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Or or the yearly or whatever it is, you gotta pay something for that. You know? But if if the people 
that are seeking and are looking to be, for lack of a better word, free. If you're looking to be free, it should be free. That's just common sense. <laughs> if you want to be free, right, why are you paying? Right? If you're sovereign, if you're sovereign, ruler of the land, why are you paying to go file UCC paper? I thought you're sovereign. Are you, are you a sovereign citizen? Sovereigns don't pay for stuff. Right there, that should let you know that you're not sovereign and you're running a fraud. Just because you go pay to file this paper. Right? Like, common sense should tell you that. Right? Going back to the, the whole, with you know, the, the, the debate with Polite and, and Sarah Sutin Yeti. Right? This guy got his ass kicked by Aleem. Who? Um, Seti. Okay. Right? And what, and, what, and what lots of people don't know, what lot, and I'll put it on the record right now, because I know Aleem didn't even put it on the record. Right? What a lot of people don't know is that there's two lectures. There's two Aleem and Seti lectures. There's one lecture that happened that everybody saw. And then there's a sit-down lecture that Aleem did by himself with all the stuff that he didn't even get to put into the thing because he only had an hour or an hour and a half or something like that. When he had like five hours of information for the lecture. And he had to cut down a lot of the stuff that he wanted to present. Right? So when you, when you hit up Aleem, make sure you hit up Aleem and you ask him for the the double disc of the SETI debate that didn't get to YouTube that he has in his own, his own private collection right and comes back again if if you you know we have a team and you lose by 80 we, have, we don't have to play you you lost by 80. You skunk. <laughs> you know what I mean? What are we playing you for? We're going to play you? To make you lose by 80 again? Because Polite's going to eat this guy. Like, Polite's going to eat him. Like, finger looking good, eat him. Right? But but that's not going to that's not gonna quiet him. And all his little, little dumbass supporters aren't going to humble to truth yeah his little minions right <laughs> they're not gonna humble to truth right they're still gonna talk their black crap that's why we're done with the black crap anybody coming on black negro color whatever yo you, your ass is getting kicked intellectually because you don't want to get it you want to keep you want to keep trying to justify you know since noble joe ali's time he's saying that that Negro black colors trying to justify this uncivilized position on a civilized world. Everybody, the whole world knows that the Negro black colored African whatever position is an uncivilized position. They already told you, Amer African slaves can't be citizens. That's not just in. That's not just here. That's not just in the corporate democracy. Right? Why do you think? Why do you think none of these, um, none of these countries in Africa that these people so-called came from are not making a claim on them? Right? They admit out their mouth. Yeah, we came from Africa. Where? Um, West Africa. All right. No West African country claimed you guys in four hundred years. Why? Like, why aren't they writing letters to the? To, you know, because Africans in power now in the United States, <clears throat> you know what I mean? I mean, it's, 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 that's from the continent. Okay, so he's African. So he's an African in the White House. Mm -hmm. And these people who are African on the continent, they're not going to him and writing letters saying, okay, you know what, man, um, we checked the, because don't forget, you know, we had the, we had the records, right? You know, the Europeans had the records of who they took and what their name was, what they changed their name to, and all that. Okay, so, you tell me that nobody has the... 
the records to say no Shaka Zulu's name change to Toby. So we need you need to send, send Toby back. <laughs> so we can so we can nationalize him into his correct status. And then we'll send him back to you. If if he's really beneficial to your society and he you know, okay, cool, no problem. We'll send him back to you. Right? No charge. No charge. <laughs> right? But no. They want to play like, you know, they're, 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 they have this position, you know? Yeah, they missed the mark. They're sinning every day, all day. And they don't want to admit that they're sinners, you know? They don't want to admit that they're sinners. They're going to sin every day, all day. They're going to continually miss the mark, right? You're going to continually miss the mark and keep aiming for that position? You know what I mean? That like you go like this, and the thing's going over there. You know, obviously, you, you know something's wrong with your with your 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 your, your approach. You know, but you know, common sense isn't going to make them see that that their approach is wrong because they lack common sense because they lack connection to the common law, and they lack connection to the common law. They lack connection to anything that, that's common. Right? And come back to the same thing about be it have, being scattered. You have in a scattered position now. And it's it's extremely important that we don't get cut up, get caught up in the mental wrestling federation. Because not only is there, you know, like when you look at, you know, don't get it, don't get it. You know, twisted or whatever. You know, like you got Sanada, for example, right? The amount of DVDs Sanada had with Taj, sat down with him, got the books out, videotaped it, put it on YouTube. It has like you know five thousand, eight thousand, whatever hits, and you're still not Sanada El Bay or nothing yet. You're still Black Power. When you sat down with the master teacher and, and in your video you called him a master teacher? Not only that, not only that, Son Other has the intro on the first Iron Cheek album. Right? Saying that, yeah, what you're dropping is hip hop. This is Son Other, out of his own mouth. Right? Not taking nothing away. It is what it is. But, like, come on, yo. You sat with Taj. Numerous times. Right? And people are still putting up this block against, you know, calling themselves Moors. And, well, no, I don't know. Because, you know, if I call myself Moorish, you know, Moorish is an adjective. And blah, blah. When Nobudrali said, we are descendants of Moroccans born in America. That's why we're Moorish, which means that we're not Moorish. We're Moroccans. But we're not going to call ourselves Moroccans today, just like we're not going to call ourselves Jews today, because somebody else has that and they're using it. So why would we call ourselves, we don't call ourselves Jews. Right? We don't. Why? Because somebody else is using it. We know that that's our title. We know that's our title, but we don't call ourselves that. We're going to find some variation of Jews to call ourselves. Same thing with Moroccan. We have to find something to call ourselves to describe that we are, we are, we come out of these people, but we're not the ancient, we're not the ancient foremothers and forefathers, we're ourselves. Right? But our ancient foremothers and forefathers, they had a name. And during, during time, you know, names change frequency that's why Taj was saying in, in, in the um, rights of indigenous peoples book right that Moroccan is a modern name for Moabite and then Moorish is a modern name for Moroccan and it's not you know yeah yeah we know about etymology and, and all that cool but you know if I bet you if 
if Moorish American was recognized as a citizenship on the census, you know, nobody wouldn't be nobody wouldn't be finding nitpicking at or well, what do we call ourselves? We can't call ourselves more. How about M U U R or M O O R or M O R E? Uh, well, how about we just say Moroccan instead of Moorish? And you know, no matter what we call ourselves, once we're not calling ourselves Negro, Black, Colored, and all these fictions or whatever, call yourself what you want. Put the prophet up front. But if you put the prophet up front, know that you can't be calling yourself some crap because prophet said that you're not Negro, Black, Colored. That's why they're not going to put him up front because as soon as you see him, you already know that we're not even messing with that Negro, Black, Colored stuff. That's not even something that we're going to have in our mind that we're going to even entertain you know like we only entertain it because every day every single day every day on Facebook there's some dumb nigger making up something about why they can't be Moors making up stuff like not even dealing with actual fact about okay why are why aren't you a Moor a Moor means any dark-skinned person especially African Negro by definition right but then you're dark skin and you're gonna tell me that you're something other than more right you know whether it's talking on the street you're somebody marsh guide you're here it's free no i don't want to i have nothing to do with marsh religion that's a religion where you read that from oh i know that's a religion nobody can tell me that that's not a religion because you guys wear hats and you guys have uh, you guys say islam and <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about you know, so that's like that's like brother brother Landry called me with a brother on the phone yesterday, right? Newbie, newbie in in the Muslim stuff, right? Newbie in the Islam stuff, right? Trying to justify um, Muhammad being a prophet, and you know, if he's the prophet, then why am I gonna be going with this prophet that you say is the prophet? Well, if you never heard about Noble Ali before, obviously. Muhammad didn't teach you shit. <laughs> Obviously. On top of that, Muslims will tell you you can't paint a picture of Muhammad and nobody doesn't know what he looks like. So if nobody knows what he looks like and there's no pictures of him, how are you going to say that this is somebody that you should be following or listening to or whatever? But it's the same thing right? with Christianity. They commit... They sin in themselves because their book says the same thing. Mm. Do not make no image of things which are in heaven. And you can find statues of Mary, Jesus, all, of them. all your stained glass <laughs> things of these, all these saints. Catholics, you know, you know the Catholics, they don't even pray to God or Jesus. Yeah. They pray to their saints and yeah. so they say that. That the saints we're, were sent. And yeah, we're not holy enough to pray to God. To so God. you got to pray to the saint, yeah. and the saint will bring your prayers to God. Hmm. Like, oh yeah? No. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> for for 3,500? Like, <laughs> you better pay your tithes if you want those prayers to get delivered. Yeah, that's you. Right. you better pray your tithes. Because if you're not paying the tithes, you know, you don't think that we're delivering your prayers for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right? So... <laughs> we we all we have to do, you know what I mean, as as Moors is you know we stick to stick to studying, stick to the true and divine. Let's say the true and divine teachers, right? Because just like when Noble Jordan was talking, as far as true and divine teachers, there's few, so they shouldn't be really too hard to find because they're they're obviously active. You know what I mean? You can weed out the few. Moors that are really active, active on the level of, you know, like, active on the level of, um, no matter whether you go online, once you punch their name, something's going to come up with their name. Video, audio, blog talk, um, news, something, they got a website, they might have some books written, you know, they, you talk to other people, they're going to say, oh yeah, go to that, you know, every, yo, Everybody that calls us from outside of Canada, right, is because they went to some temple or they tried to talk to some more and got gamed or was about to get gamed. And they seen some video that we had about getting gamed by dirty moors 
and flags went up. As soon as they were about to get the game, flags went up. <laughs> Something's going on over here. Let me just call these Canaan Land Moors and see really what's going on because I'm really not sure. You know, the people seem sincere and all that, but 3,500? I don't know. 3,500? You know that I got right here? Mm, let me just check this out first before I just give this 3,500 up. You know what I mean? It's a crazy world out there. They're out there. I They're out there. One of the, you know? in the, like the early of my studies, my you're learning about nationalizing and stuff. There's a website, somebody's website. Every time I try and find something about Moors, I'm always finding this guy's website for some strange reason. Mm -hmm. And his website, he was, they were selling uh, citizenship. But if he was under the guise of like, you know, to become a Moor, like talk about the king of Morocco. And that's his whole thing, like make yourself a more uh, a more of a Moroccan citizen. Yeah. And they have their whole form on there, like yeah. you can fill out these form, pay this money, we'll give you these books on this and this and you know, yeah. that type of stuff. Yeah. So the, they're there, like you know, you gotta be aware of them. You gotta be aware and you're only gonna be aware if you study. Yeah. If you don't study, trust me. Yeah, exactly. Trust me, and they're gonna thing. game you. That's all. Studying, you see that. No, this is not even really what I want. Like, <laughs> you know, like you said, you're trading one master for, for another. another. Exactly, yeah. right? Yeah. What's the sense? Yeah. You're trading one master for another. <laughs> you know, when you can be, when you could be I self law and master. Exactly. And you're trading masters when I self law and master. You know, but. Come back to the thing, boy. If we if we're not studying, if we're taking what Noble Jewelry brought as, oh damn, this this black guy had a real good idea that you know we're not black, we're Moors. Oh yeah, you know I think I'm gonna consider what he brought. You already lost. Already lost. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know this black this black cult leader. You know whatever they call them I mean so once once we um recognize and again it comes to it comes to individuals really trusting in what Drew Ali brought don't take my word for it don't take Taj's word for it don't take Aleem's word don't take any other more out there's word go find the prophet's literature for yourself Read the literature, digest the literature, and read it again, because Drali said everything I say is spirit. So then I read it again after that, because obviously, like like we we're talking about with the Taj lectures, you know, you're gonna watch one, and say, oh yeah, you know this that DVD was amazing, you know, you put it down, well you didn't even get nothing from that if you watch that once, yeah, because you know Taj is like, he doesn't play. <laughs> you know what I mean? Every sentence that he talks is something to do with you better learn something. You better go study. You know what I mean? Everything that he says is a reference point for you to go and research. Everything. You know what I mean? When we look at all with all the stuff with Noble Jwali, you know, just just, just the, the thing of the Holy Quran came from the Aquarian Gospel. That alone. You just study the Aquarian Gospel and the the origin of it just that alone would lead you to that lead you to Tibet is going to lead you to all these other things that's going to verify Noble Jwali's position that's why we read Trafficant right because he talks about 1913 in there which is a which is a very powerful year as far as you know the democracy's democracy's concerned as far as the prophets concerned as far as the Vatican's concerned, as far as B'nai B'rith and all these organizations that claim that, you know, they, they have some type of superior position to assist the nations of the world or governments or whatever. Uh, you know, if you check the timeline, between 1900 and 1929 is when enough of these things started popping up. You know, like of all time frames, then... And then, you know, then you go back to Nobu Ali and, you, you know, the sovereign of the land and 
you know, Havana, Cuba, and, you know, certain things that he did before 1929 um, validates his, his prophethood, solidifies his position well, as, yeah, him. everybody was following him, except Negro Black Color people. But everybody else in the world, they know that, you know, Muhammad time's done. Right? And it's time for Drawley's time. You know? Because don't we talked about this before. Don't get don't get it fooled when you hear Muslims say, Oh yeah, you know, the, the, the Prophet uh, and if they don't mention Muhammad, they're not talking about Muhammad if they don't mention his name. If you're a Muslim, Shiite, Sunni or whatever, say yeah, the Prophet said that what that blah 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 blah. Get Muhammad out of your mind. Or they would have said, Muhammad, peace be unto him and all that stuff. Like they usually say when they talk about him. If they reference the prophet Muhammad, they say his name. If they don't say his name, they could be talking about prophet from way back that way. Or Nobu Jawali. Or Muhammad, or Buddha, or Confucius, or whoever else they think is qualified to to have the label prophet. They're not going to tell people that, you know, because then that will mean that all these Sina Shiite Sunni or whatever they're really Sufis, and they, and their perspective is universal. Their perspective isn't you know go oh, go to Mecca and then run around run around a queue building. But then when you look at all the heads of all these all these Islamic heads, they're not with the people running around no building, and they're the heads. How come they're not running around the building with the, with the common people? <laughs> right? Yeah, if it's so much if it's, if it's, if, 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 if it's everybody, so if it's so significant, yes. right, how come the heads aren't going to, they should be living in Mecca. If that's the case, right, on top of that, uh, Square or cube is not Islamic in nature. Cube has nothing to do with Islam. But that's that's the symbol of their faith running around that box. When when the cube does not come from Islamic culture. Cube is Kemetic. The cube is Zozer and Pata and those people. You know, the cube's not something that, oh yeah, you know, we're, oh, we're just going to put this cube here and everybody's just going to run around this cube when they come to Mecca. That's ancient chemistry. That comes back to the same thing. If they, if the people knew that, you would know that it's more science because the Moors are the inheritors and the custodians of chemical culture. Yeah, the cube represents all that science. That science in one. You know, the cube. Yeah. Yeah. No, so there we go. Two hours. Yeah, look for. They're, I think they're in that. They're not in the back. Um, room back. Is like yeah, where the paper and stuff is. Yeah. So we're gonna get this closed out. Islam to the faithful Moors online. That's always repping it. You know, we always got six or seven every week. You know what I mean? Sometimes we have twelve, thirteen. You know. But a balance out because there's more people here than we usually have. <laughs> 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 huh? You wouldn't even know. No, I don't even know. I don't even know. But this is all the Moors. So we we'll close out. Um, five on the left, two on the right. A lot of Father of the Universe. A lot of Father of the Universe. Father of Love. Father of Love. Truth. Truth. Peace. Peace. Freedom. Freedom. And Justice. And Justice. Allah is our protector. Allah is our protector. Our guide. Our guide. And our salvation. And our salvation. By night. By night. And by day. And by day. Through His and Her Holy Prophet. Through His and Her Holy Prophet. Noble Jawali. Noble Jawali. Islam. 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 Islam.